problem three. As always, let's begin by taking a bird's eye view of this problem. We have four columns in R3. In other words, four vectors in a three-dimensional space. So they are guaranteed to be linearly dependent and the null space will be non-trivial. So if there is a solution, it won't be unique. We'll have infinitely many solutions. Now the chances are we do have a solution because when you have more vectors than the dimension of the space, the chances are that they will span the entire space unless there are lots of linear relationships among them and special structure that we might not see at first. Well, if we don't see it, then Gaussian elimination will help us reveal it. But I do think that these vectors span all of our three. In fact, if you take a close look at the first three columns, you will see that although I've scrambled it a little bit, they possess that bootstrapping structure that guarantees a linear independence. You can note this two, which is alone in its row. Among the remaining vectors, this one is alone in its row, and then you have a third vector. So all three vectors are linearly independent. I went over this relatively quickly right now. We talked about this bootstrapping structure in earlier lessons. But in any case, we don't need to see any of this because Gaussian elimination will reveal it for us. So let's begin with Gaussian elimination. Once again, to save space, let's replace the vector of the unknowns with this symbol. And I once again think that we have space for two systems side by side. So let's copy it over. Our first pivot is right here. And of course, it's in the wrong row because we want our pivots to come in rows one, two, and so forth. So the first order of business is to switch rows. We will switch rows one and three so that the pivot one ends up in this position, which is its desired location. On the right-hand side, entries one and three are the same, so there's nothing to be done on the right-hand side. So all we have to do is switch the rows on the left-hand side. So in order to do that, I will make a copy of the last row, put the first row in place of the last row, and finally copy this row and put it here. And so the first semi-step of Gaussian elimination is done, and actually everything below this pivot is eliminated. So we can move on to the next row. Okay, this will be our pivot. We ultimately want all of our pivots to equal one. Well, this one equals two, so we can either divide the entire row by two at this time, but since we're eliminating two below the pivot, it's quite convenient to work with this two, and this step of Gaussian elimination is accomplished by subtracting row two from row three. Exactly one of row two from row three. This becomes zero. Since there are so many zeros already in the matrix, might as well put a zero instead of keeping a blank. Minus one, two, and minus one. And we're actually more or less done with Gaussian elimination. Well, we are done with the Gaussian elimination part of the entire elimination process. It's now time for back substitution. So one thing I'll do at this point is multiply the last row by minus one so that this negative one becomes a one because pivots that equal one are easier to work with. And don't forget to do the multiplication to the entire row. Okay, now let's proceed with Jordan back substitution. So this one is our last pivot. And now we see that the three first columns are indeed linearly independent because now they're clearly linearly independent and Gauss elimination preserves all of the relationships among the columns. All right, so the first step is to subtract row three from row two because our goal is to eliminate this one. So it is eliminated. And since we're subtracting row three from row two, this becomes a four and this becomes a zero. Great. Our next target is this three, which is eliminated by subtracting three of row three from row one. So this three becomes zero. You have to be careful here. Four plus six 
becomes 10. And we're subtracting 3 of row 3 from row 1, so this 0 becomes negative 3. And there is just one final step left. I will copy the system over. And that step is to eliminate this 4. Well, we will also want to turn this 2 into a 1, just for completeness sake. But in any case, this step right now is to subtract 2. Let me put this number here so we don't forget it. 2 of row 2 from row 1. So this becomes 0. This becomes 2. And 0 has no effect on the negative 3. And finally, let's have a unit pivot, which is accomplished by dividing the entire second row by 2. So this is now a 1. This is a 2. The 0 is unchanged. And Gauss elimination is complete. We're now able to come up with a general solution for our problem. x, y, z, t equals, well, our first order of business is to decompose the right-hand side in terms of the pivot columns. And that is, of course, minus 3, 0, 1, 0. Once we have these dream decomposition columns, all of these tasks are easy. And finally, the null space comes from the relationship of this column to the pivot columns. And that relationship is, of course, 2 of the first, 2 of the second, negative 2 of the third. That produces the fourth column. So subtract the fourth column, and that's our null space. So here's our general solution. Let's just spot check it in a couple of places to be sure we did everything correctly. So we're invited to do minus 3 of the first column plus the third column. And of course, that produces the right-hand side, so that's good. And to make sure that this column is in the null space, well, let's see, it's pretty full of numbers. So a good thing to do is to evaluate a running sum. So what I will do is multiply 2 by 0, which is 0, add to it 2 times 2, which is 4, then add to it 0 times negative 2, which is still 4, and then finally add to it 4 times negative 1, which is 0. So that's a good way to carry out the multiplication without having to remember too many numbers, because all you have to remember is the running sum. So let's just look at the running sum. 0, 4, 2, 0. Good. And the final one is 2, 10, 4, 0. So this seems like it's the right solution, and we have now solved problem 3.